Everybody's ready. I'm going to give the floor first to the mayor of uh, saint pierre sur mer Guy Le Croisé, you've got the floor. Guy. Mr. The MP, Mr. The Regional Advisor, the Mr. The Chairman of the um, Community of Municipalities, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the European Program, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as Mayor of Saint Paul and as the President of the. Uh, SMPGA, um, I'm happy to welcome you today for the launch of the Redon, Redon project. Um, it's a project uh, relating to the producers of hydroelectricity, uh, uh, manufacturers of pumps and such. As. It's an ambitious project, uh, and we're very uh, proud to welcome it, uh, my colleagues and myself. Uh, um, in, in particular, Dominique Taillebois. We are very happy to welcome this project in saint pierre sur mer As a town opened uh, onto Europe, we are very committed to sustainable development, and this action that is uh, unique in France confirms our ambition in the, in the field. I hope that this project will be a success and that we will have contributed uh, to, to it all. Thank you, Guy. I thank you all for being present for this project. I'd like to greet first our MP Bertrand, Mr. Vogt, who represents the Normandy region. We've got the chairman of the um, Community of municipalities, uh, the mayor of Avranche, Nicolas Jean Marie Sevran, who is the chairman of the uh, community of municipalities of uh, Granville, Mr. Tarivant, who is uh, the uh, 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 Deputy Director of uh, Action Renewables. I I'd like to thank all of the representatives of uh, companies of the region. I'm not going to name them all. I see here the president of SDAM. I see one representative, at least, of SDAM. I haven't seen representatives of USDNSI. So there are several companies represented here. I've seen Suez, Veolia, uh, different <coughs> uh, engineering uh, firms. So welcome to you all, and good morning to all of the representatives of S S SMPGA. So I'd like to talk about this project. This project has been uh, ongoing uh, for about a year. We were directed to this project by the region and the water agency. They were looking for uh, support, and SMPGA um, decided to um, be committed to this project. To, uh, we had did a tour of Europe uh, with Ireland, England, in the near future, uh, we'll go to the northern part of Spain. Then there's Portugal to discover, the south of Spain uh, with Sevilla. And uh, otherwise, we've got uh, Italy. It's uh, the sector of Palermo. Uh, so we're going to visit all of Europe. I think it's very interesting. We are very much interested in this um, project because um, uh, for uh, this project for Granville is quite innovative. Uh, it, it, well, it's something that's been going on for years. 
And by uh, committing to this project, the idea is to recover as much energy as we consume. The idea for us is to be neutral in terms of energy. That's why we called upon all of the possible innovations uh, by uh, all companies. There's, there are also research centers working on the matter. So the idea is to uh, be all united, to uh, be uh, neutral from an environmental point of view. I won't say any more because during the day you will discover the, d the, the project. And we will see. Uh, what is our position? Um, so thank you all for your attention. <coughs> Mr. Vogt, Mr. the Mayor, Mr. the President, Mr. the MP, representatives of uh, companies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here today uh, to launch, to participate in the launch of this project as uh, a member of Regional Council of Normandy and as an administrator of the Water Agency of Seine Normandy. For the region, this program is quite important because the region is the leader in terms of circular economy. And I think this project is uh, very easily integrated into this uh, circular economy. And uh, a region is very much committed to um, renewable uh, energy. It's uh, another aspect of the project. It is a cross-sectional project. And, and we know those projects are pioneers in terms of de economic, technical, and, and environmental development. Uh, we had a proof of it uh, for the LECO project that is now uh, adapted locally uh, for. Um, and, and we hope that such an initiative will be, will be as efficient. And as an administrator of the Water Agency, I'd like to say that it's a project that is part of uh, a strategy to adapt to climate change, uh, stressing particularly uh, the matter of um, water savings to which this project may contribute. I uh, wish you some very good works. And, and the region is very committed also to uh, supporting Europe and to uh, European integration. I'd like to underline that uh, I'm very happy to see representatives of different countries from Europe, uh, the, uh, from uh, the Atlantic coast, but also somebody from Naples that's not in the Atlantic area. Uh, I was in Naples two days ago, uh, and uh, the climate there is sometimes very uh, rough. It was snowing in Naples two days ago when I left. So th thank you for your works. few words, David. Dear colleagues, thank you uh, to welcome me this morning to represent uh, uh, the uh, community of municipalities of Mont Saint Michel Normandie. I must to um, speak this morning was Penny um, Cochon uh, should do do it. Who's in the uh, in the back of the room? Um, she is uh, the specialist of water. And it's Peggy, who, with Dominique Taillebois, um, uh, laid this, um, the SMPGA that uh, support the, uh, the um, building of two plants 
um, that are exemplary from a technological point of view uh, who, that should be inaugurated in the coming months for the month of June, I think. So this project uh, that we have decided to contribute to, that is inter-regional, that is European, uh, coincides with uh, the achievement of the building of, this, of those two uh, water plants. And uh, so it means we've got good tools in, hand, in our hands. Um, and uh, the uh, energy uh, consumed can um, actually uh, lead to uh, as much energy recovered. So thank you all for being present here today. Uh, you understand to which extent uh, water is uh, important on a daily basis, though the one that is in our pipes and the one that falls from the sky. <coughs> so uh, obviously this kind of seminar, uh, that's to work, but also to discover uh, places uh, you uh, didn't know you have discovered maybe Mont Saint-Michel and Grandville, and maybe you will come back as a tourist. Uh, you, so it's a way to contribute to better knowledge of uh, the European territory. We we're talking about the Brexit with our uh, Irish colleague. Uh, sometimes Europe finds it difficult to evolve in a consistent manner. So hope to see you soon. Thank you for your attention. Jean-Marie. Yeah, no, normally I should be able to use a mic. Um, um, I'm very happy to welcome you here in this room. Uh, when we had this room built with the SMAG uh, and with SMPGA, we didn't know that uh, that uh, room could be used for the council meetings. We have succeeded uh, in mutualizing our skills. Um, well, so it is proof that we can work together efficiently. So for this project, everything has been said. I uh, am very happy to see here elected members, uh, people who are responsible uh, for different regions, uh, for uh, subjects that are essential for our territories and inhabitants, we've got to be able to work smartly uh, through uh, a globalization of things. So I'm uh, very happy with this uh, with this works. Uh, some of some partners of uh, Northern Europe have chosen a different way, but maybe the future. Um, may change things. Um, so for uh, subjects uh, like uh, sustainable development, we've got to be able to, to work together. So I hope you have uh, an excellent uh, day's work here. Uh, you visited the region already, but you should come back because um, you know our region is beautiful. The coast, uh, the coastline is beautiful, but also uh, the countryside. Uh, there are plenty of uh, territories to visit. We'd be happy to welcome you again. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Dominique Taibois um, and SNPGI to have organised for having organized this uh, meeting and for being uh, so enthusiastic in uh, leading um, this, um, what we could call think tank. Uh, our territory is open uh, onto the sea and also in our minds. In relation to what you just said, uh, I would say that uh, on this support the initiative uh, launched by all of our colleagues because, um, well, there are plenty of municipalities and uh, associations that have um, trusted us. Uh, I'd like to thank Nathalie Genot. Yesterday evening, I know she worked really late. 
uh, to put in place all of this technology. I'd like to thank her. Now, the floor is yours, Mr. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'd like to uh, thank uh, the mayor of saint pierre sur mer Mr. the President of SMPGI, Mr. The, the President of the um, Community of Municipalities. I'd like to <laughs> greet my neighbor, greet you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to tell you how satisfied I am to see uh, a European project <coughs> launched in a rural territory like ours. Uh, in the spirit of citizens, Europe uh, it seems to, to be quite far sometimes. And, uh, well, you, Guy, you, you said you, you were not the, the one to be um, congratulated, but I, I think you are. Um, you uh, showed that uh, will to be part of that European project. And uh, I'd like to, um, yeah, thank also Nathalie Genin for the work um, she's done. It is an ambition. I'm very happy to uh, sit launched in this territory. And I'm uh, sure that uh, the region uh, and, uh, will be identified at the European level. It's a true satisfaction. I wish you uh, very good works. There are many companies present, and I know there are uh, plenty of skills represented. So good work, and have a good day. I'd like to thank also the staff of SMPGA that has worked on uh, the matter for some time, and Jean-Paul, who was in two places at a time, but who will join us on, um, on a full-time basis at SMPGA. Mr. The Senator. You are just, uh, you just got here, but uh, do you want to take the floor? Okay, I've got no time to warm up. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for uh, your invitation. I'd like to, to greet the relevance of such uh, a meeting that calls upon uh, European uh, funds for an action of sustainable development uh, that is great for the future, and it's the opportunity to put back on the agenda what Europe can do at a critical time, because we talk a lot about Brexit, the situation is a bit difficult, and it is sometimes hard to understand the way our English friends work in uh, the field, but there are sectorial policies that will last. And it is the, the, the mystery, but also the relevance of Europe uh, for um, sustainable development, for research and development, for uh, military issues, nuclear issues. And water is also at the heart um, of these policies and will uh, last in European policies. So it is a relevant example of uh, European action. Uh, some months from uh, an election uh, that I hope our, our French uh, friends will be interested in. Thank you. Now I'm going to give the floor to Terry, who is the project leader of this European project. You've got the floor. Mr. For tout le monde, uh, je m'appelle Terry Waugh. Good morning, everyone. My name is Terry Waugh. I am 
the deputy director of a small charity from Northern Ireland called Action Renewables. We are the lead partner of Redon. We employ 25 people. We are a renewable energy company. We are concerned with the development of renewables as a legitimate and viable industry in Northern Ireland. Also in the development of renewables in general and the overall reduction of CO2 levels. In Northern Ireland, the three sectors that are the most responsible for CO2 emissions are agriculture, transport, and energy supply. The single largest user of energy in Northern Ireland is the water industry. Northern Ireland Water is committed uh, to the achievement of a greater energy efficiency and carbon emission reduction in all of its business activities. For that reason, we won't help them through this project, as do all the partners for similar reasons in their own regions. The water industry is the fourth most energy intensive sector in the Atlantic area, responsible for significant contributions to climate change and reductions in their competitiveness due to the associated costs. Redon aims at improving the energy efficiency of water networks through the installation of innovative micro hydropower technology. This technology will recover wasted energy in existing pipe networks across irrigation, public water supply, process industry, and wastewater network settings. This event, very kindly hosted by SMPGA, and particularly by Yves Cabaret, is the launch of the Redon project. Redon stands for reduction reducing energy dependency in Atlantic area water networks. It is a three-year project funded by the Atlantic area transnational program priority two, fostering resource efficiency. We have been awarded almost 2.2 million euros in European regional development funding and we have a total budget of 2.9 million euros. If I now stop speaking French, and I think whoever's been listening to me speaking in French will have to switch to the other channel because I'm now going to speak in English. Uh, I'm not very good at speaking any language other than English, and I'm not particularly good at that either. So. Um, there are nine full partners in the project, and we're lucky to have six associate partners in the project also. Some of the associate partners are here today. The full partners are Action Renewables from Northern Ireland, Trinity College Dublin from the Republic of Ireland, the University of Naples from Italy, the University of Lisbon from Portugal, the University of Bath from England, Hydropower Limited from Portugal, Faragua from Spain, FAEN from Spain, and SMPGA from France. 
As I said earlier, Action Renewables is the lead partner in Redawn. It is our job to manage the project and to make sure that everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing and to make sure that the project achieves its objectives. The other partners are the real stars of this project. They're the experts. You will hear from some of them today, and they're all here today. So I would encourage you all to take the opportunity to talk to them and to learn more about the project. The overall aim of the Redawn project is to foster the adoption of hydropower energy recovery technology in built water networks in the Atlantic area. And we're going to do that by means of a number of work packages. My colleague, Youngest McNabla, is going to explain a bit more about the work packages and what we intend to do straight after this. Um, so I'm not going to explain those just now. So just to say thank you again to Eve, to SMPGA, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President and Mr. Senator for hosting this conference today and that we hope that you all learn from it. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation. Now, um, we look forward to, to um, uh, listening to Mr. Angus McNebula from Trinity College, Dublin. Okay. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning to all the uh, the dignitaries. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, my name is Angus McNabola. I'm a professor of engineering from Trinity College in Dublin, and I've been working in the area of, of renewable energy and energy efficiency and water services for, for around 10 years. Um, I have to say I'm hugely impressed by the the impressive turnout from the audience and also from the, the policy makers. To see the, it's, it's very impressive to see the support from the mayor and from the council, from, from so many organizations that I, I, I had lost count. Um, I, I, I would like to, I wish there were some Irish dignitaries here to, to, to see how, how well the project is supported uh, here in France. So um, my task this morning is, is to give a little overview of, of what the project is about. Um, before I start, I want to thank also Eve in particular for we, we have been here, the project partners, for a few days for the reception we have gotten. The, the French reception was very, uh, very strong. The food has been fantastic. I almost don't want to go home, and I may take some of the invitations to return up uh, maybe in the summer. So thank you very much, uh, Eve, for that. Uh, so to, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we still have some meals to go for, so I'm looking forward. Um, to move forward, to say what the project is about, I am, our project aim is in, here in, in English, and I, I apologize that I, I cannot speak any French, and I so little so that I won't even attempt to do so like Terry did, so I'm, I'm relying fully on our translator, who I've found excellent so far. Um, the aim of the project was to foster hydropower energy recovery uh, in built water networks, and, and that means irrigation, it means drinking water, it means wastewater, and it also means large industrial users of, of water, like breweries, food producers, dairies. I'm sure there are many of those types of organization in, in Normandy. Um, we are trying to do this to, as some of the speakers this morning mentioned, to reduce the, the energy consumption of the water sector and to make our use of water more efficient. And there are a whole series of subtasks under there, which I'll, I'll come back to. So but before we do that, I'm going to start from, from the beginning as to why, uh, why, we're, why we're bothering to do this. It has been addressed to a certain extent. So many of you may know that the supply and treatment of water is a very energy intensive uh, process. From, from a point of view of drinking water supply, from an irrigation point of view, from a process industry point of view. And I think that many in the, in the public, whether if they're not working uh, directly in the water sector, when they turn on the tap in the morning, they don't appreciate the amount of energy that goes into the, what, they are, what they are drinking. And it is two to three percent of, of, of global energy 
and in many districts, it is uh, the, the vast majority of the spend of a, of a mun municipality is on energy connected with water supply. So it's clearly a, a problem of, of um, concerns connected to CO2 emissions. Energy is expensive, and that makes water expensive. Um, so oh, apologies. So energy is expensive, and that makes water expensive. Um, Let's say the municipality is, is um, paying for the water and also the consumer is paying for the water. So efforts we can, we can take to try and reduce those costs help our, our economy and also efforts we can take to reduce those emissions help our environment. So that's a, an issue that we're trying to address. That's the problem today and of course we should also then think to the future. The problem in the future is looking like it will become worse. So there is a, a, a well-known issue called the water energy food nexus where we might consider that by 2050, we will have a much increased demand for water, a much increased demand for food, and an increased demand for energy. And all of those three things are finite resources. And 2050, um, when people first began to talk about the water energy food nexus, seemed a long time away, but you know, it's only 30 years away now, it's not so far. So there will come a point when we will have to make the decision, how much water do we use to drink? How much water do we use to make food? How much water do we use to make energy? And since those resources are so precious, we will we would need to sort of uh, consider how we can be more efficient with those. And then climate change makes all of that more complex. So climate change affects uh, the demand for water. It's very hot, we want to drink more. But it also affects the availability of resources. It affects food production and it affects energy production. So that's the problem, or the context of the problem that Read On is, is trying to address. So there are many ways to try and address that problem. Using hydropower in water networks is a small contribution to, to making that a little bit more efficient. So coming back then to hydropower and water networks, if you haven't heard of the concept before, it is not a new idea, an idea that has existed for probably hundreds of years. Um, I know in my own jurisdiction there are um, hydropower in parts of the water network which date back from before the <coughs> Second World War. So if you look at the diagram of the water network there, it's divided into two parts. One is called the transmission network and the other is the distribution. And in the transmission network we take vol large volumes of water and we carry them towards treatment works or towards the population. And in those settings it's possible to go and get a turbine from a manufacturer and put in the put in the turbine and generate energy. And we don't need any new technology or any innovation. Um, not on the technical side, maybe on the policy and regulation side, that maybe there are some innovation needed. What Read On is focuses on the lower part of that diagram, the distribution network, where we take the water in smaller volumes and we distribute it into the towns and the villages. And in, that play, in, th in those networks, current technology is often too large, physically too large, too expensive and not designed to fit into small water pipes. So for that purpose we need a different approach and some of the speakers, uh, Professor Caravetta from Napoli will tell you a little bit about how that might be addressed later. Um, putting a, a turbine in, a, let's say if, if we establish that water consumes a lot of energy, water services, putting a turbine into a water network takes some of that energy out. So you would ask, well, why would you do that? It needs the energy to begin with. There are, the, the networks are imperfect. There are places where there is too much energy and there are places where there's too little. And that energy is in the form of pressure. When the pressure is too high, we traditionally try to get rid of it as it causes excess leakage or bursts and so on. So if I put the turbine in where there is too much pressure, the, pre the turbine consumes some of that pressure and also generates electricity. That is the concept. So we cannot simply put the turbine anywhere we like. It has to be where there is an excess of pressure. So our project is about mapping where are those excess pressures in Normandy and also in the entire Atlantic area. It is about trying to uh, come up with technology that will fit into these small places and, and um, recover energy in an economically viable way. So that's the idea. Um, then. At, the, at present, that, that hasn't happened because we don't have low-cost turbines to, to exploit these small uh, potential sites, so all of these little black dots I've indicated on that diagram. And there are many thousands of places in the distribution network, and if we could tap into them all, each little one together adds up to a lot of energy. And our, our project is about 
uh, in a certain extent, telling, telling people about how much energy there is. So if we knew how many kilowatts it all added up to, we might make a greater effort to exploit it. So part of the project is assessing the market. Um, there are also reasons connected to the, to the need for policy and support guidance. There are reasons which are of a non-technical nature why this hasn't been done before. That's the, the concept is somewhat obvious when someone tells you about it. So why isn't it in place? There are, there are barriers of policy which are, differ from one country to the next country in, in Europe. And so it's great to have the ear of the policymakers today. Um, and then we have a need for pilot projects. Our, our project will in, involve physically constructing some of these as examples for our European partners and our European friends to, to see this is how it's done and now you can try it in your own region. So one pilot will, will take place here in France and uh, later today we, we will, another speaker will give information about um, the pilot plants that we plan to do. Okay, so coming back to um, the detail of what we're trying to do, um, the, the series of points underneath, I, I'm going to go through a little bit just to explain what it is we're, we're, we're trying to, to do in detail to try and foster this greater uptake of hydropower. Um, the project is, well, that may be hard to read, but the, the project is divided into eight work packages, as Terry mentioned before, and these are our partnership of, of nine partners comprises skills um, to do with various aspects of hydropower, the technical design, the policy environment, the physical exploitation in irrigation sectors or the physical exploitation in, in uh, process industry, all these expertise are different. And so that is why we have so many uh, people from around uh, Europe. So one of the things we're, we're, we're first trying to do is to say, well, how much energy is available in water networks today if, if we were to try and if we had this technology, how much energy could we save? So um, uh, the little light blue map there is what the Atlantic area region is. You can see it incorporates Ireland, the Atlantic coast of the UK, the Atlantic coast of France, and, and all of Portugal and parts of Spain and also some of the, the islands. So in that region, we're trying to quantify how much energy is, is there, how many excess or points of excess pressure exist under the ground. And some of my uh, researchers here in the audience are, are busily working on that. And we, we hope to, to produce a map of here as all of the places and, and such as to try and quantify the market for, for this technology. Now, there are many challenges associated with doing this. That is a lot of water pipe networks in that in, in all of that area. So w some of the data may be absent. The data we're interested in acquiring is, is things like the flow and pressure in networks at points of excess pressure and the dimensions of networks. And some of that data may not be recorded. Some of that data may be hard to obtain. We may, we may come to you and say, Monsieur, can we please have your network data? And you may say no. And so we're, we're in trouble. So part of today is to, to help us to ask those kind of questions. And also, we have a challenge in that we are addressing four quite different sectors. Drinking water is very different from irrigation. It's very different from a large process industry. So we have a, a lot of information to gather. Um, we're also working on the technology side. So Professor Caravetta will mention what it is exactly. But very briefly, we were trying to produce low-cost turbines. One technology in particular, we're not focused on just one, but one which we will certainly focus on is called a pumpus turbine. And pumpus turbine is a pump which we reverse and it will produce energy rather than consume energy and pump water. The advantage of a pumpus turbine is pumps are mass produced and as a result of mass production they are very cheap. Whereas turbines are not mass produced and they are very expensive in contrast. The disadvantage of a pumpus turbine is that it is not supposed to be a turbine and so it is much less efficient than a turbine. So there's a playoff between the cost and the benefit. The difference in cost is the order of 10 to 20 times less expensive. So we can absorb that drop in efficiency for to use a, a device that is so much cheaper. So this is a, a real low cost solution. Um, some of the work we're trying to do here is when we reverse a top pump, we don't know what power it will produce. Often that information isn't available. So to help people understand how to use it in water companies. We're producing design guidelines and software to, to help people to, to use it themselves later. 
Um, we're also coming up with other support softwares. Uh, if you can imagine, we had a water network and we wanted to recover energy. There are different ways to do it. We could identify existing places in the network where we have pressure reducing valves and we say, well, we'll replace those with a turbine. But those mightn't be the places where we'll get the most energy out. So we're trying to optimize the network to give us back the most energy. So we can ask the question, well, how many turbines should we put in a network and where? And so this is the software that's being developed by my colleagues in IST in Portugal and also with myself in, in Dublin um, to, to answer that question. So we, at the end of the project, hope to have some software to, to disseminate to the European community. Um, Again, I mentioned earlier we're demonstrating, so this is a, a somewhat, a sort of a map of, of the different types of water network that we're looking at. So there is water supply for drinking water purposes, there is irrigation for food production, there is wastewater treatment, and there is also process industry, and by that I mean large consumers of water. Um, and there are many examples of those. Uh, so the, the little bubbles on the outside are places where we could put a turbine, so like a pressure reducing valve, like a food production factory or a wastewater treatment work. So there are many places. Uh, in the Read On project, we have three demonstrations that we're going to physically do. One uh, in the south of Spain with Foragua, who are one of our partners um, in an irrigation community, a pressurized irrigation community in, in Andalusia. Uh, one demonstration here uh, with SMPGA at a pressure reducing valve, and one demonstration in Portugal at a paper production factory. So they consume a lot of water, and the same principle of a water network exi exists, but in the factory. So we hope that all three of those demonstrations will be examples. The project will involve visits to these places. So uh, we open the invitation to everyone in the audience to be very welcome to come to see, I'm sure SMPGA will be convenient, but also in Portugal and also in Spain. Um, finally, we're, we're also working uh, on the policy and institutional support. So if we, if we look across all of the countries in Europe involved in the Atlantic area, there are many different types of organization involved in the water sector, and there are many different types of regulatory and government environments. Some of them are very supportive of, of innovation, and some ha are less supportive of this type of technology. Uh, not necessarily on purpose, but simply the way that it is set up. And so we're trying to learn from the different regions and the different types of organizations and identify best practice, perhaps that's in France, perhaps it's in Spain, um, so that we can come up with the best policy to, to uh, produce a white paper for, for Europe to support this technology. So um, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for hosting us this morning. Thank you for this presentation. Welcome forward to uh, hand it over to Professor Armando Calaveta from Naples University's Federico uh, II. He is one of our technical experts on this project, uh, and uh, we, we've been fortunate to uh, work with him uh, with a view to assessing the potential of this new technology. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you to the public and to uh, the president uh, of uh, SNPJ for the hospitality and to Eve. Uh, there is a, a competition that started in, uh, in our visit here between wines in Spain, Italy, and France, and between uh, football and between uh, rugby. So it is only, not only scientific and, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, technology, and, uh, and, but also relationship between countries that is involved in our project. Uh, I am Professor Caravetta. I am from the University of Naples. Um, yes, we had the snow. Uh, in Naples, so my flight was cancelled last day, so I don't know if it is climate change, but it is climate variability anyway, and so I think it is a, 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 a uh, a signal that we have to improve our uh, attention to the to the climate and to the environment. Um, here is uh, uh, somehow uh, the philosophy of of our project. You see that there is a, a 
new launch event. It is a launch of the of a car in the space. It was uh, made uh, in in uh, last month to uh, to with the new rocket, a private rocket that is uh, sending a satellite in in the in the in the in the space, and they send a day a, a car in the in the space. On the other side, you see an usual launch event. So uh, are those that are sent in the space by by people that is uh, in a marriage. So our idea of this project is to uh, move from an unusual and conventional launch of, the, of a technology, that is this technology applied to the water network, to an usual technology to be applied by water utilities and by industries in, in their uh, real life uh, uh, use of water. And so to make this, um, uh, to, to, to exploit this technology and to pass from something that is unconventional to something that is usual, we have to move from technologies that somehow are only in our mind to technologies that are plug-in and so that can be easily used by people who make design in, in the water network engineering. Uh, why to ask for somehow an outsider? Because I'm out of the interreg Atlantic area. Um, I think that is because we have a good relationship between many of us. Of course, this is a, a, a preliminary thing. But uh, it is also because uh, I, I mean, I've been interested in the innovation, technological and innovation in the water sector and in the water network in the last years, in the last decades. And in particular, I work with the pump industry in, uh, the, um, in making the standards for uh, uh, the reduction of uh, energy uh, use of this uh, machine at the European level with the <laughs> European Association of Pump Manufacturers. So I have good contact with the industry, and the industry is the, one of the uh, leader uh, sector in this uh, in this in this application because we need the machine to be used to convert the energy in in our network. By the way, we have a, a very nice lab that can be used to test pumps and to test uh, pump in inverse mode and to pump turbines to uh, set uh, to uh, uh, find the real efficiency of this of these devices. In the, uh, I like very much the, the plot that uh, uh, Angus uh, uh, showed before. So this uh, circular modulation of the project. So in this circular modulation, uh, uh, we are somehow telling that to exploit this technology is necessary not only to give technical information, but to make uh, assessment of energy, uh, to make dissemination, to make policies. So the only way to, uh, to make this technology available for everybody is to have all this approach integrated in a single project. And so uh, I make a part of this circular modulation. In particular, I work on the technical aspect and on the production of uh, guidance uh, uh, and project tools for engineers. So in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the kind of, uh, uh, I don't know if it is here, yes. In the number of items that were addressed by Angus, uh, we need uh, we are in this blue part. So need for low cost turbines, need support supportive policy and regulations, need for pilot projects. We help in this two part, and we try to uh, work hard in this first site and so on the technical aspect. Why we need this turbine? So why we, in general, uh, dissipate energy in our network? Uh, the reasons are of different uh, kind. One of the reasons is that we have morphological variation of the ground. So basically, to carry water to a high point, we have to uh, put energy, give energy, give power to the stream. But then, uh, downhill, we have excess energy. But the other reason is that uh, often our network are not so 
new. Uh, we are not managed to uh, change all the network that we have in our cities, and this means that our network have a percentage of leakage. And the way that the technicians have to reduce this leakage, to, to, to reduce the use of water, is to optimize the pressure in the network. So if we uh, grant a pressure that is lower than uh, the one that was uh, in the past uh, um, supposed in the design, we can reduce uh, the water leakage. And the way to reduce pressure is to put valves or automatic valves in the network, and this valve will dissipate energy. So the idea is that if we regulate the pressure, we can give a pressure distribution that is more close to the energy, the minimum uh, pressure that is necessary to give water to the end user. And we can uh, try to convert this energy that is dissipated in the pressure reducing valves, automatic valves, in our uh, um, turbines or in our PAT. Uh, why the problem is more complicated in this part of the network, so in the urban network or in an industrial network or in an irrigation network in the peripheral branch of the network? The reason is that the more we go far from the spring, the more the system is affected by the variability of the user demand. So if we make a measurement of the flow that is passing in the network and of the pressure in the network, this uh, uh, flow and this pressure, when we go in this peripheral part of the network, exhibit a strong variation. So basically, when uh, we are in probably here in Granville, in the center of Granville, in the morning people is going out from their house, and to go out they go to open all the... Uh, toilet and everything, and so the, the, the use of water increases, then they go out and the uh, use of water decreases. So we have a variability of the user demand and the variability of the flow in the pipelines. And of course the pressure is in inverse uh, relation with, with the flow rate, so if we have uh, all the taps open, uh, the pressure reduces, and if we close everything, the pressure increases. So something, it is something that is complicated uh, for an electromechanical device. So it traditional turbine in this part would work nicely because the pressure drop and the, and the flow rate is constant, but if we go there, we have a variability that, yeah, that have been faced by this, by this uh, turbine. Um, another question that people often uh, pose is about the difference in the recovering energy in a stream and recovery energy in a, a water distribution network. Uh, in a stream, things are more simple because uh, the water is not under pressure. It is a free stream, and we put it's, it's uh, enough to put a wheel, like Leonardo probably made uh, nicely, and we produce energy or we transform it directly in mechanical uh, energy. But this is not the case of a, a pipeline. In a pipeline, we don't see anything. We just reduce pressure. So the problem is to convert this energy inside the pipeline, and it is a bit more complicated than in, in, uh, in, in a stream. <laughs> I'm Italian, so an Italian product. Uh, and this is uh, obviously a Ferrari. <laughs> So, Italian brand, but uh, I, I found a lot of San Pellegrino bottle of waters in, <laughs> in, in the restaurant that Eve <laughs> showed us in, in our tour. So, uh, this is a Ferrari, and in particular, two Ferrari cars. The first is of uh, the 2008, and the second one is uh, 2009 models, because the model of Ferrari have this uh, uh, number, that is the number of the year of the, of the championship where they are running. And uh, apparently, if you go the, the, the car from outside, there is no difference. So in your pipeline, there will be no difference before and after our working uh, and our application. We, the difference is in inside, because in the eighth model, we have brakes. Brakes act as uh, the traditional valves. So if you stroke a valve, you make vortex, and this vortex dissipates energy in uh, heat somehow. And so a brake is a traditional way to stop a car. We brake, and the energy is transformed in heat, 
hmm, it is dissipated. In the model that is uh, you know, of the nine model, and it is the actual model of the F1 uh, car, we have this kind of uh, uh, kinetic energy um, converter that is scarce. So basically, we connect the wheel to a generator that acts as a brake. So we break the car, but in the meanwhile, the energy is uh, uh, recovered, and it is stored in a battery. So the principle is the same. We want to make this kind of, uh, of, of device inside the network in order to not dissipate merely energy, but to convert this energy in other form of energy. Could be uh, to supply energy to uh, a building, or to uh, uh, supply a car with, uh, with energy, or just to put the energy in the grid. So uh, the, 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 the difference between a stream, so traditional turbine, and uh, what we make in a pressurized network is that the size of the plant is smaller, and the power that is available for the transformation is variable. So the traditional solutions are not possible for power that are lower 50 kilowatt. What act as a barrier to uh, the exploitation of hydropower and water networks. There are two aspects. The first was a technical aspect, we told you. The second one is a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, um, a social aspect. So water utilities, manager of uh, industries, uh, manager of irrigation networks are very concentrated on their main sector of activity. So what they want is some that any solution that we found for their, uh, for, to make this recovery does not affect in any way the principal activity. So if you put a turbine in a water network and the day after the turbine uh, just uh, collapse and the water doesn't come anymore to the end user, we are not making a good, uh, a good job. We are simply making hard and hard work. So uh, there is a concept that is basic in, uh, in the approach that we use and we are using in the design, the technical design, that is the concept of rel reliability of the product. So we can't affect in any way the re reliability of your network by putting a device that has a lower reliability than the one that you are using actually. And so uh, the problem is to give very reliable solution, plug-in solution for your plants. And so I made a, a kind of, of, of uh, uh, scheme where I put two variables. I have to explain, but it's the last, basically the last thing that I will do. I will put uh, several technologies, because there are several technologies that are available I, I wouldn't say on the market, some are just uh, uh, ideas, some are um, uh, pilot technology, some other are industrial technology, other ones are things that are used for, for different reasons. And are this one, the pumps, as, as uh, Angus told and I was told. In the axis, we found two, uh, two names, reliability and uh, viability. What is reliability? Reliability is, the, uh, is, a, is a technical name. It means somehow how much time it passes between two uh, fail of the machine. It is something that is very used in the industry. It is used in the industry of pumps. It means that mo the more reliable is the device, the most time, more time is passing between two stop of the failure of the machine and uh, also the maintenance of the, of the, of the pump and of the uh, mechanical device is, is, is small, the cost of maintenance. So we are looking for very reliable solution. On the other axis, we have, a, we have viability. Viability is a more complicated concept. Why? Because here we are mixing. We are mixing the cost of the device, the possibility of using this device in the condition of your network, and also how much power they get, how much energy they get from the grid. So a viable solution is something that is as a, a small payback period and that can be used in your plant. 
What we found, uh, some, uh, in my idea, is that there is a relation between these two, uh, these two uh, quantities. Because if we are very um, uh, rough, let's say, not very used solution that are at an ideal uh, moment or that are applied uh, in, a, in a situation that is different from the one that is necessary in that moment, they are not reliable. But if these solutions start to be used, the reliability is, is increasing. Because you are using uh, the, 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 the machine, knowing what the machine is doing, and the most you are using this machine, the most this is an industrial, very well uh, organized solution, and the most is reliable. So we find that we found that uh, it happens. Okay, that the last uh, uh, in the last point of the of this uh, of this uh, 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 diagram, we find the, pump, the, the pump used in inverse mode, the pump is turbine. Why? Because they are very cheap. They don't get as much energy as the other, the traditional turbines, but they are very reliable. So if you go to any water uh, uh, user, water manager, they know what is a pump, they know how to manage a pump, and they know how to make maintenance to a pump. And it is something familiar. It's like to have a dog in the, in the house. It's not to have like to have a, a tiger. You can, <laughs> you are, uh, it's a friendly, it's a friendly equipment. And so we think that this could be a good solution for our project. But we are open to other solutions. We are testing other solutions. The problem is that many times, and I think that there are also probably there will be here, there are be here some, some producer of other technology or people who use other technology, that the producer of new technology sometimes take this data secret. So we don't have all the data that are necessary to make the design by ourselves. And we want to have this because if you want to exploit a technology, it is necessary that you have the data. Any, anybody in the future need to have the data to make a design, like for a pumping system. You can check on internet, find several curves, and find which is the best product for your, for your solution, for two or three, four industry, and then you make a tender, but you are sure of what you are putting in the, in the network. And this is the same. We want that put in this uh, network technology that are tested and the technology we know which is the answer of the of the of the technology what is put in this network and so i friendly ask and i'm asking to the producer of new technology not to be so close but to be open to the market because the most they are close open to the market the most this technology can be used and can be proposed and the more that will be demonstrated that it is reliable for the network Uh, okay, so here is somehow a conclusion. Uh, so, in, in because of this uh, of, of the talk that I gave, probably we will try to uh, to use PAT in our in our uh, te techno leading technology in our project. We know perfectly how to make the control of a micro power us, uh, using a PAT. We know how to maximize this energy production without losing system reliability. So the designs that have been uh, made in the last decade of scientific uh, research was to increase reliability, to, to take into account reliability and efficiency together in the design. I think that with this project, uh, the design and uh, the curve to make the, the design of a micro hydro power plant will be available to all engineers, not only uh, to the technicians. Our pilot plant simply will give some indication on how to make this power plant and to demonstrate that they will work. We will try to give guidance to people where they can go to put their devices in the different sector and how to maximize the energy that can be produced and, and uh, without uh, reducing the reliability. Uh, I think that all producers of new technology can participate to this, uh, to this uh, idea of exploiting this technology by opening to this uh, uh, new approach and to giving data for making uh, the use and the reduction of energy use in water networks a uh, very good uh, deal for the future. Thank you for your attention.
Merci beaucoup. Non, donc... We were lucky enough to have a presentation of the main broad lines of the project to understand how we can work uh, on this read on project and how we, we've understood how we'll need the support of all the uh, players, all of the stakeholders in the water sector um, so, so that the principle may um, become mature. Uh, so let's have a coffee break now to digest all of this information and then we'll get into a more operational phase with three presentations of examples of uh, energy recovery that have been achieved uh, in our territory with uh, Ponte Mousson, Ferdinand Maison and Seve. So, thank you. See you in about 25 minutes. <laughs>